How can I partner with you to make this happen? National Orientation Agency say they want to have meetings, they want to have rallies. St. Helens say we have to make this happen. Now, because it is a citizen engagement process, St. Helens' responsibility is to make sure citizens are involved, are involved. Mm. in government and so the exactly so because we understand when citizens are more engagement in more, sorry when citizens are more engaged in government and in governance then they can demand accountability and transparency that is why this cso co-creation because we can't expect every citizen to go engage with mds yeah. but yeah. we have civil society representing citizens and if you look if you look at the national action plan i think we have like 10 CSOs, some of them have 7 CSOs in partnership with MDAs, with MDAs, just to make sure this happens. So I wouldn't say that um, it's a success so far, which is going back to the question, I need to give you a background, but mm -hmm. I would say that progress is being made because civil society organizations are beginning to take ownership and they're mm -hmm. beginning to partner with MDAs. If you notice, budget has done a tremendous, tremendous good job on engaging with the Ministry of Budget and Planning. Yes, Ministry of Bu Budget, budget and office, and budget office. Yeah. national planning and the budget office. office. Yes, thank you. They've done a good job in engaging with them. Progress hasn't been made. Budgets with they are not satisfied with how much the government has done. Even um, Santa LSD, if you see the report, they said it was limited progress. But Santa LSD has engaged immensely, so also budget. But there's a lot that needs to be done. But the important thing is, they are. Le it's a learning process for all of us. We signed on, remember we signed on in 2016. Mm -hmm. The first year was 2017, January 2017, September 2017. Mm -hmm. And then they released a report. So, um, I guess it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I had the cause to interview somebody over this particular um, open government partnership, and we looked at the national action plan and also the level of implementation mm -hmm. um, that had been achieved um, during the period. And um, for the first one year, uh, it was looking like about 70% of what was set out to be achieved was being achieved from one of the commitments that we looked at. You know, but the thing is that with all of this one year of the, you know, of implementing this action plan, it doesn't look like the citizens actually knew that anything was going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, there's a gap in citizens' involvement and enlightenment. And that's why for us as Citizen Engagement Working Group, that's our trust for the year. That's our focus. We are going around the country as it is to make sure citizens, because one of the pillars of OGP is citizen engagement. Yeah. So you can't take that away because from Because it, it was even said that the, the civil society is actually made up of citizens as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And CSOs are the voice of the citizens, of the citizens. As it is. So we are doing our town hall. We did one town hall meeting on Thursday. Okay. We have done a zona rally in Enugu. We are going to Northwest. We are going to go around the country to enlist the support of citizens. And it is very critical for them to be able to know what the OGP is and what are their rules are, and for them to be able to make demand. Because gov governance is a two-way process. Yes. There's a demand and mm -hmm. there's a supply. Mm -hmm. If there's no demand, there won't be any okay. supply. Okay. So that's, is, that is very critical. But looking across the 14 commitments of the NAP, um, like she said, there's a steady progress. In some of the commitments, you might get a below par Mm. performance, some there's some yeah. above 70%, and largely due to issues around funding and co-creation. But one thing that has stood very clear from the UGP implementation is that for the very first time in the history of this country, government and CSOs have come together to work harmoniously to achieve set objectives. And it will surprise you the level of harmony they get. Like, let's, for example, we and NOA, yes. we are co-chair for citizen engagement. Thankfully, we have a funding from Makato, thanks to them, uh, wonderful people. They gave us a funding for three years for the OGP project. I know NOA is MDA. They have to depend on budgetary releases, and, and so sometimes they are cash trapped. But mm -hmm. we, because we have money, we come together yeah. and do things. And nobody knows who is funding what. You just, you just see the activities are moving. For example, Commitment 13 is almost done and dusted. What, what's what is the Commitment commit? commit 13 is um, government and CSOs to jointly review legislations around anti-corruption mm -hmm. and make recommendations to National Assembly. It's very critical because if you look at the anti-corruption, the ACIs, they have um, laws that, are, that set them up. Yeah. Some of those laws are obsolete. Some have gaps. Mm. So that commitment is, look at these laws. What are the gaps? What are the issues? Why can't we effectively fight, anti -co uh, fight corruption Corrupt in this country? Look at those laws. Um, review it with government and CS without co-creation. It must be on the table. And look at the critical and say what are the issues, and now make recommendations to National Assembly. I, I we have done that. In fact, we did the research 
in two areas. Okay. You commission a government research and a CSU research from both perspectives, so it could be balanced. And the researcher did their job and submitted a report. We now convey that roundtable as it is in the commitment. In Abuja here, we brought everybody, government CSO, 40 government and 40 CSO, on the table. And they look at this report. What do you think? It was ratified. Now it's been published into a book. We even done advocacy brief. Mm -hmm. Now we are at the level of engaging the National Assembly. I look at recommendations from this report. These are the things we should do on these laws to make them do better. I'll give you one instance and I'll end. Okay. For example, the CAC, the, the Enabling Act is the CAMA, the Company and, and yes. Allied Matters yes. Act. Act. And we are talking about beneficial ownership now. Yes. Now, as that law is passed now, it only makes provision for uh, private liability companies to declare beneficial owners. But then you know plenty of sleaze happens Happen, in this yeah, business. Where we have people who are benefiting from businesses directly, but they are not listed. Absolutely. So the reform that is going on in that karma is to make sure public limited liability companies declare public beneficial ownership. So that's what we did in that commitment. Mm. And that is very wonderful. Well, what's interesting is that it's an open government partnership, partnership. right? And in yes. Nigeria, we have three tiers of government. We have the federal, we have the state, and we have the local government. Yeah, no. um, this national action plan, does it stop only with the national government, with the, with the federal government? What, um, what's happening with the states? Are there any commitments from the states? I think some states are beginning to sign on to JGP and um, we, we are hoping, well, they are hoping that um, <laughs> I'm not civil society right now. I, I'm here as a consultant uh, on the report. So they are hoping that um, states will catch on to it. And okay. Cardona State has signed on, Anambra has signed on. Um, I think there's one more state that has shown interest in it. Kano, Kano has, is almost there. Has shown Ninja, Ebony. States have, have shown interest in There's a catch which I don't want to say on air. Because that catch, we don't want states um, ho holding on to the right. catch on signing on to JPP. I need to say this. I thought it was an open thing. And <laughs> it is open, but the World Bank has promised some funding, and we don't want states to hold on to JPP because the World Bank has promised funding. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, we'd rather they hold on. They, decide to sign on to OGP for because value for the value, exactly. And if they now sign on to OGP, then they can find out how much the World Bank has available to them. Oh, okay. so Sometimes yeah. you have to dangle a bone. bone. Yeah, yeah that, so it's definitely a carrot and stick <laughs> approach. Yeah. But okay. I just need to say this, and I'm going to say this as an independent observer, yeah. because I w was engaged on, you know, reviewing the National Action Plan and the reports released by the government. And I need mm -hmm. to say this, even in doing, even in citizen engagement, I do not believe that citizens have been engaged well enough. Mm -hmm. Why do I say this? While they have done a lot of progress on the commitments on citizen engagement, remember that this OGP, they're all 14 commitments will have citizen engagement yes. involved. It's not just the citizen engagement commitments, but every... Um, so I find that some of the reports they will say part of their commitments was something that had to say we need to get cities, we need to train people on understanding something. We now have thirty people in a room and they say they've they take that as a project. Yeah. Nigeria is a country of 180 million people. How do you get a lot more people involved mm. in these processes? Mm. Along, even with the budget, budgets will tell you they are not satisfied with the project, made, with the progress made. Because on having interviews with some of them, especially the most progressive commitment was commitment one. And that was a commitment that talked about an open budget cycle. Mm -hmm. But I realized that even at that budget, even at that commitment, so much was not done. Because part of the deal was each MDA should publish their budget on their individual websites. Mm. But everybody's um, budget is on the national budget, is on the, is the ministry budget's website. So those are the kind of things that you see that even though citizen engagement is involved, the government still is a bit rigid. They are not flexible enough to accommodate the changes that the GP has, to, um, has offered. Another thing is Sometimes, like, even when they had a national, when they had a meeting at the National Assembly with, on discussing the budget, and civil society presented their reservations yes. and comments on the budget, we find that not every commitment, not every comment was adopted. There was something that had to do with health. There was something that had to do with health, and civil society had said there's a, there's a plan in the budget for a certain percentage to go into health, which has never gone into health. Mm -hmm. And so civil society made comments on it, but nothing was done about it, even mm. in the 2018 budget. Mm. So it's one thing for you to sit down with civil society and discuss. Yeah. It's another thing for you to now implement, to implement the recommendations that mm. they have presented to you. So those are the kind of things that we see. But it's a work in progress. We are hoping that as time goes on and as we continue with... Um, can I speak briefly to the subnational engagement? Okay. okay. Yeah, the, the trust of the work we do on the OGP is actually around subnational engagement. 
if you have these beautiful principles and policies at yeah, the federal level, yeah. and it does not cascade it doesn't down, trickle to, down. Hey, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So the focus now is subnational engagement. Um, she has mentioned it. That's why World Bank came in with some grant that, look guys, if you sign up, you're going to get this as grants to support the work that you do. So even at the UDP sector, there is a subnational advisor. His work is to make as many, as many states as that can sign up to the process. And it's very simple because we want this thing to cascade down to the local level. And thankfully, Kaduna is a clear example. Kaduna was the, is the first state to sign up to the OGP in Nigeria. And, and breaking news, they have been accepted into the global sector. Well. Yes, okay. as a subnational body. Because they can also take in subnational bodies at the global level, which means if you go to Kaduna, the governance is open, transparent. I also want you to run across the country. And we are engaging. And that's why the role of civil society is very, very key. Because we have civil societies in all the states. Okay. We are organizing them around the Open Alliance. Now, Open Alliance is the coalition of CSOs working on the OGP. Over 150 of them. Okay. So we are now supporting Open Alliances in states at state levels that... Let us so that we can aggregate. Let us as yes, many. Uh, yes. Let us organize at every state level yes. and engage the government and let them know why they have to join the OGP. It was surprised that some state governors have not heard about OGP ever. Uh, in their life. We're not okay. surprised. So well, that's well, why we are we are we are well, we are organizing CSOs at that state level to ensure okay. this happens. Okay, well, Duchenne, let me just let me just quickly let me just quickly point this out before the time goes. You just said right now that Kaduna is one of is open. The government of Kaduna is open. You just didn't mention it on on yes. air. I'm, I don't know, but I'm, I'm wondering what what yardstick are you using to judge their openness? Because here's the thing, of the commitments that are uh, that are in this report that we're analysing now, there's about uh, how many of them? Fourteen commitments they're about. Yes. Now you and you've broken it into two limited in terms of progress uh, achieved on these commitments. You have broken it into limited and substantial at the national level. At the national level, true. Now. Of the of of the fourteen of them, just three, I think, is substantial has uh, has seen substantial uh, improvement or, or, or progress, and the others have been limited. Now, if you were you if you're going by that yardstick, for in fact, not even if you're going by that, what yardstick are you using to measure whether some whether some commitment has been uh, substantial or limited? Maybe we'll take that yes, answer we'll, we'll after. Yes, we'll probably take break. that after the news after at the news. seven. All right, welcome back. It's still Buhari Meter. We've got um, less than 30 minutes to go, and um, this discussion has only gotten more interesting since it began. We're discussing the open government partnership and how much progress has been made. Um, looking at the report um, that has come out through this first part of implementing the National Action Plan. Our two guests in the studio, Shemal Koye um, is one of the consultants, working with the team and Uchenna Arisuku, um, a co-chair and program coordinator African Center for Leadership, Strategy and Development. Welcome again uh, to our guests. Thank you. All right, so uh, before we went on the break, Razak, you were making a point. Yes, I was saying that uh, what yardsticks were, were, um, are used to determine what progress has been made in different commitment, sec uh, commitment arms uh, of this particular report. The shadow report that was, I think, was was launched. Was it last week? It was yes, last week. Thursday. Yes, it was launched last week. And um, you said you said that, well, you said that um, Kaduna was open, and I was like, okay, so what yardstick are we using to judge for for the? So the, this are two, is, is actually a twofold question. The f number one is, on the whole, what yardsticks do you use to judge whether a, a a commitment has been substantially met or if it's been limited in in meeting its um its um its target. And two, how would you classify what yardstick would you use to judge a state that has actually met commitment and, and, and to be to be open? Okay, thank you, Razak. Um, let's talk about yardsticks for measuring um, commitment. They're actually true. When we started in Nigeria, there were baselines that were set, and mm -hmm. there were indicators and there were targets okay. that you meet. So there's a baseline and there's an indicator. So you know where you're coming from. I know where I'm going where to. Going. So from there, and again, one interesting thing about the OGP process is that there's something that they call self-assessment report. Mm -hmm. Now that self-assessment is, is you by yourself who score yourself. 
Nobody will call you for yourself. They will send you um, the they will send you the the, 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 the the information. Please, it's time for assessment. Rate yourself. So it's you that are doing the job. Will tell yourself the truth where you are, and because they do not want you to set up yourself to fail, there's an actually they call the independent review mechanism. The independent review mechanism, people will come from the global secretariat to come and look at your self-assessment report vis-a-vis uh, -vis what is on the ground. Okay. Because it's very possible with human beings, say, score yourself, you say I'm 95%. Yeah. But because you know that there will be a verification exercise, there will be a confirmation, you tend to stick to what is the truth. So from that self-assessment report, NBA, was, they will ask, guys, how do you think you're faring? Against the baseline and indicators and target that were set for each commitment. So when you mind this together, you will assume that you will be sure that you will get the right status of where each commitment are. That way, if you look at this report, most of them are saying limited, 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 because mm -hmm. that is the fact. As against formal practice, people will say excellent, excellent, yeah. excellent, yeah. because they know that there's a process of verification. And now, coming to the state, how do you say a state is open? Before states join the process, they, they, will, they will look at the National Action Plan, look at their own peculiar terrains in their own state, and adopt their own state action plans by which they will be measured. Because as the nation is measured, as MDAs are measured, states are also measured. Mm. So you have to set your own target, your own indicators, your own commitment. Mm -hmm. It must not be 14. It can be 2. It can be 3. Mm -hmm. Just look at what is realistic in your own terrain yeah. mm -hmm. and set up that action plan and work towards it. So by the time you are ticking the boxes, and we all know for Kaduna, even before the UGP, there have been these issues of participatory governance, mm -hmm. like in mentoring project. Mm -hmm. There are some, even by, by um, Twitter, you can Twitter the governor, you can, there are mechanisms, there are platforms that you can use to measure the contracts and how they are faring, that you can do FOI and, and all that. So they've been practicing that even before the OGP came. So when the OGP came, they simply latched on to that. And that for me, I think they are doing well in that direction, even though they are not where they want to be, but at least it's a process, as against some other states that I cannot mention here. Okay. Okay, well, um, perhaps I should, I should direct this to Shema. Uh, there's, a, there's the commitment nine, okay. which actually is to take appropriate actions to coordinate anti-corruption activities, improve <laughs> integrity and transparency and accountability. Now, this commitment is, is, is tagged substantial, substantial, which okay. means a lot has been done here and we think we've done a good work. Okay. But here's the thing, here's the thing. You go, there's a caveat. Even, even, even the report itself has the caveat to say that, look, the report on this commitment is vague and does not speak to the activities mentioned okay. in the NAP. Can you Okay, speak first to of all, let me just say this. This civil society shadow report is mm -hmm. a shadow report of the original report sent by the government. Uh -huh. So this is civil society's take on it. So you see, the comments here are our observations mm. on what the, oh, government, what the government said of reported. itself. Okay. Exactly. So like, if you, if you look further into the report, you'll find that we have the national... What we did with this report was we compared the national action plan that is, these are your activities, this is your focus, this is what you want to do for mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. You now compare the National Action Plan with your self-assessment report. Mm -hmm. So in the past year, what have you done in line with National Action Plan? Then we now provide our comments. Mm -hmm. Now what we've done in civil society is to let you know that, okay, even if they say they've done some things, because some, we noticed that there was a disconnect sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like National Action Plan will say they need to get this done, but they do something else and say, well, they did this. But with Commitment 9, I need to commend Anich because they did something good there. Mm -hmm. um, it has to do with asset recovery, I think. I mm -hmm. think that's what has to do with asset recovery. Um, there's corrupt, uh, anti -corrupt, uh, corruption activities. Uh, they need okay, to no, no, no. That was integrity on... and oh, yeah. transparency. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, so and by coordination. The coordination and they rated themselves as substantial. Yes. We were not satisfied with the substantial rating. We okay. felt more could have been done. And I think it had to do with CSO partnership. CSO mm -hmm. did not really take own that one. Okay. They, they really they really didn't own that. Yes, it, their report was vague because they said and on, it was their completion was ongoing, ongoing. If you notice there was a lot of level of completion not started, not started. You know, the only thing they did was set up a cabinet committee by the Federal Executive Council and mm -hmm. developed a national anti corruption strategy, but nothing much has been done there. I don't want to like give them I don't want to fill them all through because it's a two year national action plan. Mm -hmm. What happened at the end of the plan? At the end of it, I think it ends in twenty nineteen. No, December this year. Oh December 
remember this year at, at the end of 20 so a new one begins in 2019 forgive okay. me so we are hoping at the end of this year we will have seen ample progress made so yes it's it's um yes they are vague in some of their responses and they have not been particularly um in line with the national action plan they've tried they've tend to Deviate. Totally differently yeah. and yeah. disconnect from the national action plan. So, so in such a situation um, where you find that there is this vagueness with um, you know the level of implementation and all of that, what can the civil society now do hmm. to make sure that it is done? It's because at the end of the day, we can reach the end of national action plan. They've not done it, and yes, you know, resources are uh, time has passed. Everything has I gone. think that's what I think that's what this report was about. C kudos to St. I have to give them credit for deciding to take ownership of this report because what this report did was, you know, while civil society, when civil society started with this report, their intention was, I believe, from, from an independent point of view, the intention was to say government failed, government don't want to up to GP, mm -hmm. government don't want to do this, but they forgot the element of co-creation. Okay. Which meant that if you want government to work, civil society have to engage. monitor, evaluate, and engage. Yes, okay. thank you. And they didn't do that. So where you see that the government has really not followed through with its commitment, I wouldn't want to blame government entirely because they are used to procedure, they are used to bottlenecks, yes. which is where civil, civil society, society comes yeah. in. And civil society says this should be done differently. Yeah. And civil societies have been engaged, which is why I will say this again. The commitments that made the most progress, citizen engagement, budget, procurement, and our need on recovery of assets, it was because the co-creation partners and civil society decided to engage actively. And to drive it. And decided to drive it because funding was also a major, a critical Asia. factor. Mm. Government is used to certain ways of doing yeah. it. Structures. They are used, used to saying and not to doing. Structures. Yes. It's, it's not used, just the structures. <laughs> we are going to do and mm -hmm. not do. And not do. And they'll tell you there was no funding or budget did not accommodate yeah. that or we did not have staff. Civil society, I must say, have like brilliant minds, have the capacity, they have mm -hmm. the technical know-how to an extent. And so when civil society come and engage with you, so anywhere you see they've not done well, I think civil society, we should also blame ourselves. Mm -hmm. It means we haven't engaged well enough to okay. ensure these things have made progress. Mm -hmm. So going forward, it will be civil society understanding and taking ownership of the National Action Plan as well. Okay. And saying this has to be done. So on this anti-corruption, condition of anti-corruption activities, we find that Anija and Wango Net, West African NGO Network, that's supposed to be like a big NGO. They are the NGOs responsible for making sure that that commitment nine actually so follows, through. follows through. And let me speak to this bigness and commitment nine. Yes. You see, part of the challenge is also coordination, if you want, among government agencies and um, arms. Okay. Look at. This one now, introduction and passage of Whistleblowers Act. Okay. We're supposed to take it to the National Assembly. In right. fact, we have done a advocacy brief on the research we did. Part of the recommendation, most of these laws about anti-corruption, some laws have been passed at the Senate, oh. they are pending at the House. Some mm. have been passed at the House, they are pending at the Senate. Some have been passed by both arms, just many harmonization. So it remains transmission. Mm -hmm. so, so when this MDs report ongoing and substantial, because they have done their own bit. MOJ, for example, the Ministry of Justice, they have packaged these laws and transmitted to National Assembly. Mm -hmm. CSOs have also done their own bit. It remains for National Assembly to finalize and pass and forward for action. So you see, when there's a lacuna sometimes, it's beyond the MDA and yeah, beyond civil society. Yeah. That's why we also step in advocacy to everybody concerned. Not only national assembly, even the judiciary. Yeah. This is what are the bottlenecks. What can we do about it? Yeah. And look, these are the things we can achieve. So let's get it done. Okay, okay, fantastic. Um, let me just ask now: If going forward, since this is going to end now, you say in a couple of months, yes. and obviously we, uh, it's going to be renewed, eh? Sure. Okay. Are we going to go renew with the same, with the same structures in place, or we're starting afresh, or we're just going to build on what's been done? We are going to build on what is done, but it is going to be different from what's already done. We are going to How look at so? this current map, look at what worked, okay. what didn't work, and okay. improve on the the next map. The next map is going to be very critical because this one, you know, as the first time as they are teaching issues, mm -hmm. which we have through the process of implementation identified. Mm -hmm. So we are, in fact, we have started the process of us already as CS to begin to engage amongst us. What do you think is critical in the next map? We are beginning to think ahead. Okay. What are the shortcomings of this map? What are the critical issues that we are not captured? There may be environmental issues, some serious mm -hmm. issues that we are not captured that we know as a country, these are critical to us. 
how do we make them appear in the next time? So I begin to be critical. The next time is going to be very, very substantial from this. I believe it's going to be much more worth the while. This one, like I said, there are teaching issues and we have learned from it. And again, before we even talk about the NAM, it's critical we implement this to a substantial level of completion. Because if we don't do very well, the country stands at the risk of being kicked out. From the from the global global yeah. okay. So before we even talk about investor, let's deal with the one we have. Let's on finish. Ground. That's why there are plenty of activities of finish plenty well. of yes alliances for us to get these things to a Because right. when they come for independent review mechanism, they're going to look at how far have you gone? Why should we let you continue? Yes, I was thinking the same thing that if on the on the international scene, are they not looking at us and saying, "Look at these people; they are supposed to be here and they are here." But I'm sure there are, there are other countries that actually have followed similar patterns of growth in terms of the OGP standards, uh, like Nigeria. Are there no countries we can emulate? Yes, there are countries we can emulate. Like I said, we joined at the same tier. Uh, mm, same with, yeah. So, but you know, the OGP is country specific. Okay. You must look inwards and look at the specifics of your country okay. and deal with it. So you can only you can only do peer review, make you can only do a peer review, maybe on issues that are common to okay. countries. But you don't need to mirror or shadow another country. It's yes. inward. You must look at what are your people. because these are commitment you committed to by yourself, by looking yourself, at what is on yeah. ground. Yeah. So yeah. nobody yeah. from the outside influenced you, nobody forced you to join. Yeah. You your say reality. you want to do this, you committed to it. Yeah. So it's for you to deal with it and get it done. Well um I think this I think we I was recently at a meeting um and we had a conversation about the security over security budget and budgeting for security and these and these issues came up and government authorities are vague on their response. Mm. But we know what the law provides for. We have a procurement act, and it's interesting how we um, we have laws that sometimes we feel we do not, we are not. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? We are not bound by. We are not bound by because even according to procurement act, we shouldn't even we shouldn't still have the federal executive council sitting over discussing contracts and all of that. That's the mess we find ourselves in, unfortunately. And civil society is engaging. Civil society is engaging. We're asking questions and we're hoping that progress is made. But with Nigeria, we take baby steps. We just keep taking baby steps and we keep, and we keep at it. We can't give up. Sure. We can't give up. We know what the law provides for. We just continue to engage on the law and the provisions and all that it entails, basically. So what you're saying is that that particular process wasn't very open. Kind of, sort of. I oh. don't want to be quoted. Well, it's a meter. It's a quarry meter. So, of course, we have to put these issues on the yeah, I, radio. Yeah, I mean, we, we know it wasn't. We know it could have been done differently. We know it could have been done better. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, you're out there. You were trying to call us. We saw your call come in, uh, but it went back. So please try and call us again and um, leave us your message there. Let's take a look at WhatsApp and see um, how many messages have come in there mm -hmm. so that we can um, yeah, take the listener's angle to all of this. Is there a call coming? What do we have here? Okay, try to call us right back. Maybe we kept you waiting too long. Um, we'll be happy to hear from you. Okay, um, would we want to speak on the Nokopo thing before we? Yes, I, I have something to say about the Nokopo, although it's been interesting. I'm um, the Nokopo is is something that's really like I, the word I'm looking for. It. It's really been a bit. Um, it's been grinding our gears for a while. Why has it been grinding our gears? When civil society began to engage with um, the Bureau for Public Procurement, and they said they already had the Nokopo platform. They had said the Nokopo platform was existing prior to us even signing on to the GBM, prior to the right. National Action Plan. Yeah, and right. not the and, and not the day to do was to take off with it. But it's interesting how after the launch of the Nokopo, and you notice the report even said that the, 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 the self-assessment report said that they were accepted as world standards and they had conformed to open contracts and data standards. They had conformed to standards, but the Okopo, Nokopo only had historic data on it, which meant that you could citizen could engage on the Nokopo. There was nothing on the Nokopo that could. It's, it's in fact it's been redundant since they keep saying they are working on it, they are working on it. Nothing has been done, and um, citizens can engage, and that defeats the entire process of OGP. It defeats the purpose of OGP where citizens can't engage. Although although they say they are making progress, but it's been since last year. And if you go to their website now, nothing is still done. If you go to the Nokopo site, the last time. I checked in the couple sites. Nothing is done. Nothing has changed. No fresh data on it. Just historic data. Nothing to engage on. You can't follow procurement processes on it. So there's a lot that needs to be done. I think um, 
um, the, the issue is this, and it's been, it cuts across every government agency. We do not own up to issues when we have issues. We do not own up to faults when faults exist. We just say we, we have it covered, we have it sorted, we have it sorted, thereby producing bottlenecks and clogs and making it difficult to get mm. work done. All right. So these bottlenecks are the biggest challenge right now, obviously, from all that we have said. Razak, you were trying to say yes, something? Yes, yes. They, they say, um, the FOI. You know, this this one came to me, and I was thinking to myself that we've had this discussion on the FOI aspect of your of your report, and it looks to me like um, it is it is it is uh, thrown out as limited. But isn't this the crux of the entire business of open government <laughs> partnership? Shouldn't there be this freedom of information act? Shouldn't it be a, a central? Shouldn't it be a central focus of your work? Um. I w let me say something on this one. What I want to say is, remember the National Action Plan, first of all, is a two-year plan. Mm. I, want, I want to stand as the devil's advocate right now. And Very what please. I want to say is, um, it's a two-year process. Some, when the National Action Plan was implemented, a lot of things were not anticipated. Mm -hmm. The issues on ground, what government had in existence, some, like what, what we just had a conversation about the Nokopo, what we thought the Nokopo was and what the Nokopo really was. was okay. Those are two different things. So with the FOI Act, the first thing they were supposed to do on this access to information was to establish freedom of um, information desks, mm -hmm. FOI mm -hmm. desks, where each, in each MDA, mm -hmm. you should be able to find someone who can give you information within each MDA, where they can even share information within the themselves as MTAs and with the citizens. Okay. But you see, they are still collecting names. So they are still in the process of collation of FOI desk, collation of FOI officers. So th that is what is hindering progress. I'm hoping that at the end... Since 2016? Well, 2017 was when they began the process. At the okay. end of this report, they said they were still collating. Right. That is what they said. So if this collation hasn't been completed, there's really little or nothing that can be done until the names and these FOI officers have been assigned to their desk in the different MDAs. Wow. So we are hoping that at the end of this year, we should have FOI officers in each MDA that can engage with themselves interagency okay. and with citizens. So okay. that's where it's limited. They're in the process of collation. And you know government with bottlenecks and bureaucracy. Yes, I can so imagine. And all this society are stepping advocacy up on that. that mm -hmm. We are taking too much time on just collation of names. Mm -hmm. yes. And of, of course, also the platform for that feedback that feedback mechanism, mm. because there's supposed to be a permanent dialogue mechanism mm. Mm -hmm. between government and CSOs. So those platforms and the you, that you need to get that happen, they should tell that they are still doing auditing and they are still collusion. I will tell them, because that is not the the work of the civil society, mm. because there are government agencies who have to, who has tasked with those um, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. For example, they need that. Mm -hmm. National Information Technology Development Agency. Mm -hmm. Their work is to develop this platform that citizens can use to engage. Mm -hmm. And even your FOI, some want to be it interactive, we also use technology. So we are telling them you do not because um, Moshe Dabiola of Blessed Memory says if a man uses 20 years to learn how to be mad, how many years <laughs> you used to practice on the streets? <laughs> Okay. This is a two-year project, and you are using the entire uh, time to just go late. You are saying no. Please, let's get to work and get over with this bottleneck. So because it's a co-creation, we're actually engaging them. Who, who, who are we holding responsible for this creation? Is it the federal Media government? Is it all the, okay, okay, or who, um, is, who is actually in charge of it? For the FOI? Yes. The Ministry of Justice is the MDA in charge. Okay. Then Media Rights Agenda is the CSO partner. Okay. They are the lead CSO partners on yes. freedom of information. So at the end of the... So I think FOI Coalition is yes. there. Right to Know is one of them. Yeah. Right. Public service reforms too. So there, are, there are quite a number of people, there are quite a number of agencies that, uh, that are in charge that are actually at work on this. So I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm nonplussed as to how it is that uh, nothing is coming out of it. Because yeah, I I'm mean, it, like we said before, the more of the number of MDAs, because even inter, you know, ministry, department, collaboration. agency, collaboration is a big problem. True. Just working on True. normal things in Nigeria. True. Not Little to talk else. of where we now have a timeline, we have a deadline, and we have different people who are supposed to oversee different, different aspects of what's going on. I mean, I, I can totally see why it hasn't worked. And that, that's why um, I also think that um, civil society needs to up their game a little bit to be that 
you know, that fluid part of the whole thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like to go back, back to money. Go back to money. Go back to money. No, this initial reluctance from MD, civil servants. You know the official secret act. Oh, say okay. Something that's supposed to, but if you look at the FOI act, it's saying oh. that where there's a, a conflict, the FOI supersedes the official secret act. And luckily for, I think it was last week or so, the, uh, the appeal court rule that the FOI is applicable in all the states in Nigeria. Mm. Because I'm saying hiding at look is not domestic domesticated in our state, so we can't practice it. But the law says no, it's everywhere. So from that I think there will be much more uh, attraction in getting this FOI thing done. Mm. Okay. All right.